Good evening and a very warm welcome to your English news package with radio and television Tonga for the hour. Making headlines, the government will review the foreign investment regulation after three petitions were made against it. Rebuttal of misleading information being distributed regarding the salary of parliamentary office holders. And the government in discussions to allow people over the age of 60 to apply to CEO positions. Now for the stories in details. The Minister of Trade and Economic Development announced during the whole House Committee deliberations yesterday that the three petitions against the foreign investment regulations will be returned to the government to review these regulations. Mark Ake tells you more. The Minister of Trade and Economic Development, Honorable Dr. William Latu, says although this is a huge conflict to local growers, but the foreign investment regulation is made specifically to help them. Latu added that the government is willing to review the foreign investment regulation in order to solve the misunderstandings surrounding it. The Foreign Investment Act began in 2011 by the government of Lord Tuivakano and was followed by a public consultation during the government of the late Prime Minister Akris Pohiva and approved by the government of former Prime Minister Pohiva Tuyunetoa last year. It is clear that the misunderstanding identified in the free petitions is in regards to the word process, but Ladu elaborated there is an authority in the minister to reword this term so it makes more sense to growers. The minister made it clear that the ministry does not allow a license to be issued to foreigners that wish to farm certain crops in the country which is what some growers are concerned about. There is also a concern as only 3% of the total local farmers in Tonga signed the petitions, which could mislead other local growers and farmers that understand the regulation. The Office of the Legislative Assembly released a statement after they had received inquiries regarding misleading information that is being distributed, which alleges that the Legislative Assembly did not approve the review and adoption of new salary scales for members of Parliament as well as the staff of the Legislative Assembly and related issues. The officer says that the timely allegations being made are not true and the decisions regarding these matters were made according to law and approved by the Legislative Assembly in 2018. The government is currently in talks with commissioners from the Public Service Commission to see whether people aged 60 and over should be allowed to apply to CEO positions. This was revealed by the Prime Minister, Honorable Hwakawa Meliko, during parliamentary discussions on the Public Services Commission's 2021-2022 annual report. Mark Ake again with the details. During the Public Services Commission's 2021-2022 annual report discussions in Parliament today, the Prime Minister, Honorable Hwakawa Meliko, said that people aged 60 and above aren't allowed to apply to CEO positions, but there are people in this age group with vast experience, and so this is why they might be allowed to apply to CEO positions in government. Ewa 11 People's Representative Daniela Fusmalo he said that there must be more focus on CEO positions since they oversee the operations of each government ministry. There were also concerns that there are too many government workers at the moment. However, Hokawa Medico said that this isn't an easy issue because they can't lay off workers. An artist and climate justice activist, Miyakami, who is currently a teacher at Tupou College, Dolo, is on her way to New York to receive her award from the UN Foundation known as the Sustainable Development Goals or SDG Vanguard Award. The SDG Vanguard Award recognizes leaders who work and impact reflects the urgency of the SDG agenda and the imperative to leave no one behind. The UN Heroes Award honors the extraordinary compassion, courage and determination of UN frontline workers. The theme for this year's award on the 3rd of November is We the People's 2022. Miyagami shared on her Facebook page that she is overwhelmed and deeply honored to receive the award. She adds that she knows that this level of recognition would not have been possible if it weren't for the continuous support and love from families and friends and others. 
Miyagami also says that she's not only representing Tonga at the awards in New York, but also to Paul College at Doloa. And the University of the South Pacific has been ranked in three subject areas on the Times Higher Education World University Rankings by subject. On the 25th of October 2022, USB ranked in the 2023 Times Higher Education World University Rankings by subject in Social Sciences, Physical Sciences and for the first time in the subject of Business and Economics. According to the World University Rankings by subject, USB's Physical Sciences ranked 601 to 800, Social Science ranked 501 to 600, and the Business and Economics ranked 501 to 600. USB's ranking in the Physical Sciences and Social Sciences bands is the same as in the 2022 the World University Ranking and in addition to this, another subject to Business and Economics has been ranked in the top 501 to 600 by subject in the 2023 the World University Ranking. Vice Chancellor and President Professor Paul Aluwalia said, that achieving ranks in three subject areas was a great achievement and that he was proud of the USB staff and research students who despite the challenges faced and worked hard by publishing in top tier research and journals. He added that research publications had immensely contributed to achieving this prestigious ranking in not one but three subjects. Professor Alwalia also said that this achievement also indicates USB's commitment to delivering quality education in conducting innovative research, which is the foundation of their strategic plan to be ranked a second time in a row and in the new area of business and economics is a testament to the hard work of their staff and students are continuously doing their places in these rankings. Sports is up next to with Mark Ake and it is kindly sponsored by Pacific Timber and Hardware. Two-time Olympic gold medalist Dame Valerie Adams is in the kingdom to promote and screen her documentary More Than Gold in the country of her birth. The film tells of Adams' life as a famous athlete, a mother, a sibling, and a role model. It also shows her upbringing and the obstacles she has faced, such as growing up poor, racism, and barriers that women face. More Than Gold also shows her journey to success and her final appearance as an athlete in the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. The director of the film, Briar March, and producer Leanne Pooley also flew over with Adams to promote More Than Gold. During a press conference at the Tanoa Hotel this morning, Adams talked about why she brought the film to Tonga. This is really a dream come true for me to bring this back to Tonga. Um, and it was, it's, it was important for me to do this. Um, I'm hoping that through my story and through my journey, I can really inspire not only the people of New Zealand, the youth of New Zealand, but also our um, daughter here in, in Tonga. Um, so this movie is it's called More Than Gold, and it's more than just a sports film. It's a, it's a film about my life, and I have, along the way, broken a lot of barriers that we see within our Tongan culture, and um, what our youth face in society today, and trying to navigate life um, in the Western world, in the Tongan world, at home, in church, and everything um, our youth face of today is, is not necessarily that easy. Um, making this movie was always going to be uh, very hard, but also one that I wanted to take on and making sure that it was told in a very honest and truthful and raw way. So what you're going to see, for those of you who are going to come and watch the movie, you're going to be you laugh, I hope, you're going to cry, uh, but you're also going to see how important it is to me, for me to come from the Wapuhi Mabawaya Kaikuma Wawa. Um, it's wonderful to be here with uh, Brian and Leanne, who um, uh, directed and, and produced the movie. And for them, it was um, for me, it was important to get uh, people to tell my story, 
um, the way I wanted it to be told, but also be passionate about this um, project. It's, uh, it's the first of its kind in New Zealand, and um, it's the first Pacific uh, sports film by a sports person as well, so this is amazing, because normally we always see men, 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 and rugby, 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 but this is something completely different, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I am looking forward to the next few days in the screening and I'm hoping that the story can not only reach our youth but also our people, our young, our women in, here in this country and also our men um, because there are a lot of challenges that are faced between um, both male and female, both youth, right? So we have to be able to, to be that responsibility, be that example and I know that it's a requirement of me now whether I like it or not. I am a role model whether I like it or not. Everywhere I go. So that's really important to me. Adams also talked about why she chose to create and release the film in this day and age. Right, back in 2012, there was a book written about my story, and it was great back then. The youth read, and, and my story got out. Um, now it was uh, the youth is on the screen, tell your story on the screen, firstly. Secondly, um, a lot has happened since 2012, but now we have two children with a lot of you know things that happened between then and now and it was the timing was just perfect for me and then I retired in January or moved on to my next phase in life because I feel like if you say the word retirement you should be a little bit more tall and white hair and a walker you know like get to get everywhere but um, I'm not doing that just yet but um, yeah the timing was right the timing's perfect and perfect enough for me to now we're I mean, we had to film through a pandemic as well now the pandemic has kind of seen mostly passed, but to be able to be here right now, like it was a dream back then, reality was far from, from, from seeing it actually happen, but to actually be sitting here today is phenomenal. It's absolutely great. Adam said that the film also touches on subjects that are taboo in Tongan culture. I bring out conversations that are very difficult and need to be had out in public and quite open about it. So I took this journey on and along the way with my IVF journey, more and more Pacific women has reached out, especially the Tongans, because they know the stigma around it. When, you, when someone gets married, we all know this, when someone gets married, the first thing you ask after that, when are you having a baby? When are you having a baby? The other side to that is, when someone has a baby, they are expected to stay home and be a mum and a mum only. Right? Yeah? Right. So my uh, response to that is, you can have a child and be a mother and be a great mother, but also have a career. There's, you know, there's no reason for you to all of a sudden lose your identity in the process of being a mother and a, and a wife whilst caring for this child. That's, you know, we say in Tonga, it takes a village to bring a child up. You have a village, use the village, you have a good set of support network around you. Do that to be able to continue on with your career and your passion. It doesn't have to end there. So the film showcases a lot of um, tough conversations that we find tough, but it's not tough in New Zealand, for example, because that's just the way of life there. But we need to make sure that the, the woman or the females feel like, oh gosh, I would like to get married, but if I get married, my family's going to pressure me to have kids and this, that and the other. It's like, no, you know, talk to their partner, whatever, get married, go and travel the world, have a child, you can still be a whatever you're doing um, work-wise in your career, you can still chase both dreams, there's no uh, reason. Meanwhile, director March said that filming during the pandemic was difficult. However, they were fortunate that Adams was able to take a camera with her and capture some lovely moments during her time at last year's Olympics. Also, as a result of COVID-19, the film's release had to be delayed. Production for More Than Gold took almost two years and it took nine months to edit. Although the film is still in cinemas overseas, there will be multiple screenings in Tonga. There will be a private screening of the film for invited guests tomorrow at the Tanoa Hotel, and there will be screenings for secondary school students on Thursday and Friday morning. At 5.30 p.m. on Friday, a public screening will be held. And that concludes the tonight's English news package. But before we part, here's the one final look at tonight's top stories. Government will reveal the foreign investment regulation after three petitions were made against it. Rebuttal of misleading information being distributed regarding the salary of parliamentary affairs holders and the government in discussions to allow the people over the age of 60 to apply to CEO positions. 
And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Alice Itupo. Have a blessed evening.